Hi everybody, welcome to the QB School. I am JT O'Sullivan. Today we're taking a look at what does a pros pro backup preseason performance look like? The ins, the outs, the what have yous, how to get through reads, maybe what's missing at the very end. Fired up for this one, let's dive into it. Jake Luton, get it going. Welcome to the QB School. So before we dive into the video, just a quick reminder, Quarterback School Patreon community. The link is in the description to the video. Great way to support the channel, get even more in-depth content over there, really streamline the process. Never been easier, cheaper, better way to support the channel. Thank you so much for getting over there, becoming a member of the Quarterback School Patreon community, spreading the word on this channel. It means a lot to me. I sincerely appreciate it. As for this one, let's get into the video. All right, Jake Luton. Have himself a nice first half here, Hall of Fame game. Big time game for him here, competing for a, his spot with the Jaguars. Love to see guys come out and have really efficient, quality, pros, pros performances. Because these are meaningful reps to guys who aren't, quote unquote, starters in the league. And so right here, we get a little old school shallow cross. One, two, three, rip it on the body on the break. Just a really nice job master class here on some of these progressions and so these are really clean looks you know the preseason you're you're usually going to get clean simple plays so right here there's the shallow cross it's usually paired with a deep hook over the ball and then like a deeper hook on the backside. different teams will read this different ways but normally old school it's one two three then on the front side number one usually has an alert post which is usually a quarters zero alert. Now, some teams might differentiate who's one and who's two versus man. It's always almost a shallow versus zone. Occasionally, you can turn that deep hook into one. But at the end of the day, whatever it is, he does a nice job of going, playing the true shallow kind of high-low here. It's not there. Get it back here. Just a nice, easy one, two, three. You can play for me. In addition, there's a check wide or check swing. And what does that do? That pulls that flat defender. So just going through kind of what happens here defensively. If it's zone, this curl player will be able to, if he squeezes to this deep hook, you should have a nice window right here. The only person that can really take it away sometimes is the corner. And if that corner feels this swing, get wide, he can get wide and it can create an even bigger lane to be able to get that deep hook. So again, you're going to see super clean looks in the preseason, but you got to go out and execute it. And this is executed really well. So you got the shallow coming across. Is it there? No. Off of it. Deep hook. You know, you feel that backside curl hook defender squeeze it. Linebacker type. Come right back down here to the bottom deeper hook at the bottom. And then watch what the corner gets wide with the swing. Just a nice, easy, clean, big lane window. But really nice job from Luton being able to operate that thing, get through one, two, three. You can really see it from the backside here with the progression of what it looks like. And for me, I just love seeing guys get through progressions here and really meaningful snaps for them. No, no, yes. Stays on time, on rhythm. He does a really nice job of it all night. Next one here, third and short, third and four. They're going to run a concept up top at a three by one, what most people call shock, which is an inside fade to the number two and a little stick to number three with a locked hitch outside to the number one. Now, this is a nice conversion on third and four, but what I really like is the ball location. He protects the tight end. Watch the ball location. It's right on the body, on the break, not necessarily away from the near defender, but gives him a shot. Now, it helps when the defender slips and falls, but in a perfect world, to me, and again, th there's a reason why some of us were backups and some of us are starters as far as the consistency with the ball location. You would love for this ball to be caught here, catch and turn and give yourself a shot. Now, again, I see him falling. Okay, Don't freak out. It's not a perfectly placed ball, but it does protect him from being able to run into this collision. And because they have to make a tackle, you're able to squeeze up, fall forward, get even more yardage. So it's, it's not a perfect throw, but it's certainly a good enough throw here. Right on the body, the defender can't make a play on it, and we get to turn up the field and go get some more, fall forward. And again, you catch zone, 
in third and four, you're probably not thinking you're going to catch a whole lot of zone in third and four. You're thinking, you know, right here, middle field closed. You know, you got a great opportunity for what is normally that inside fade. There's that locked hitch. And then if that inside fade isn't there or they roll out of it to just what they do here to split field coverage, then we can use this stick-ish route, little hitch, to be able to operate enclosed as a check down, one to two. Or in zone, split field coverage, that might become the primary, which exactly what he does here, he's able to get it to him again on time, in rhythm, accurate enough, nice base. Again, watch watch the shell of the defense. Closed, open, catching Tampa on there. It's a really nice, easy, simple throw, catch, conversion. Yes, it's just efficiency. What you want from a quarterback who's got to come in there, maybe play a couple weeks, bridge your team, catch a couple wins, go 500, those types of things. You have to be able to trust these types of quarterbacks, and he does a really nice job of it. Next one here. This is old school flanker drive up top, zebra out down here at the number two. I think I have a whole video on this play. This is an NFL classic, West Coast classic. Now, you, you know, Luton doesn't have to hold on to the ball, and they certainly had some ball security issues in this game. But what he's doing from the quarterback position, going right to left, pure progression here, is a master class. Now, it's not the most difficult thing in the world, but you don't see a whole lot of guys at college going through reads like this. This is one, two, three. No, two. Just that fast. And the accurate ball allows him to run after the catch. Now, it doesn't allow him to hold on to the ball. But what the quarterback's doing here is just a really nice job. And again, this is simple football for NFL standards. Short motion, that's where the ball's going to go. That's not the first read, though. What is the first read here? Must outside release go. Sometimes you'll see guys throw that if they love the matchup. But really, they're trying to get the ball to this out. So that is usually one. And then you've got the drive coming across. And then you've got a kind of rub, basic, or in right there that usually operates as the number three. And then my favorite version of this has the check down burst coming across here. But at the end of the day, you just need that back out over here to kind of operate as that outlet back to out the back door. So again, just, I appreciate the efficiency more than anything else. The guy's doing his job at a high level. No, I think you could make the argument maybe that you could throw that out if you give it another hitch, but he gets off of it on time. I like that. I like that even more. You know, you could force that out down here, but he gets off of it on time. Again, just a little coaching point, super picky. If you catch bump press down here, you know, it's probably going to be outside leverage, so you don't love that. So maybe you want to get off of it early. But if you love this matchup, say this is your dude, say you're playing high school football, this is your dude. We're getting him the ball. It's one on one. I don't care what the leverage is. Versus press, you really want to give it an extra hitch or reset. So what is normally three and a hitch out here, maybe now becomes three and what I used to call a sink. So get back to the back, hitch. Sink on that a second and then get to the drive. So, you know, I'm not saying he should do that here. I don't know who those dudes are. They could. But you can see here that the out still wins. That's why this play is so great. It gives you so many great man runaways, zone opportunities to sit down in zone, settle up. That's why you see a staple across the league in anybody who has any sort of bones in their West Coast system. And again, from the quarterback perspective for this video, just understanding the timing of playing pro quarterback, just getting completions. One, two, three, no, down. And then again, this is a handoff of a throw. That's, that is perfect. And you can see what it does. It allows him to keep running. Next one, two-minute situation. Probably my favorite throw of the first half. Down here at the bottom of the screen, we've got a tight end, a little out and up. First, we get return motion. Okay, go to school on the motion. Does anybody move with the motion? They're just bouncing around. Clean country zone coverage. Looks like cover two. Got a two beater on down here to the bottom, a little seven up. Heads up, seven up. Great job here with the 
design of the play, play calling, love taking a shot, two minute, but also watch Luton pump, hold that corner down, pump, drive. So just that subtle little, see his arm separate here, that on the corner opens that thing up and you have to have that arm to be able to drive that thing, but to the boundary, just a really nice job. This is just, this is high level preseason football. Love it. Feels like we're battling for a spot. So what am I talking about? We catch what we're going to call half field coverage, cloud coverage. So he's half field. He's playing the rolled up flat right there. So what are we going to do? We're going to inside release and go run at that half field player. Now I would prefer if he stayed outside, but I think he goes inside the half field player, whatever. Where the ball ends up going is we're going to make this thing look like we're going to run flood or sail. And we get something in the back right here. So we're putting a two on one on this flat defender, this corner. But what the play really is, is then we're going to pump this sail seven and we're going to hit the hole. So what we're really trying to do is get the ball to the tight end here on this little out and up, up the rail by being able to run off the half field player and then hold the flat defender with the back. So we've got a, we've got this guy holding him here and we're running through here on the half. And so we're trying to create this window by the design of the play. And we're going to pump right at this corner to be able to settle his feet and drive that hole. So a lot going on here, but this is a, this is a pretty intricate preseason play. Nice execution. You can watch that route from the tight end. A little down, out, and up. Whoop. And again, just that subtle pump. Watch what it does to the corner down here to the bottom. Settle his feet. Boom. One step there allows that window to be open. Beautiful ball. Protects him. Big chunk play in two-minute situation. Give yourself a chance for a big score right before half. Again, I just love the execution here from Luton to be able to take shots down the field when he has them. Boom. Rip. And show off enough arm strength to do it. Nice job. Two more here. Another great progression here at the bottom of the screen. Third and two. We're getting smash at the bottom with a shallow coming to us. No. Yes. And there is a penalty on this play. But for our evaluation's sake, when we're watching the quarterback, it's just another example of him getting through his reads. One, two, three. Just really nice, simple, clean. I feel like I can trust this guy to get through his reads. And so what I'm talking about here, where the ball ends up going, it's similar to what we saw earlier on the flanker drive zebra out. Now they're just pairing it instead of zebra out to the front side. They're going to do some iteration of smash. So smash from a condensed split usually gets changed from a hitch to a quick out. So we're going to read this thing one and then come back here to two. Or you could read this thing however you want to say it. You could say we're reading the concept one. You could say we're going to read low to high to shallow. There's... 8 billion different ways to do it. But at the end of the day, it's smash over here. We don't have it. We don't like it. We have shallow coming to us, usually paired with a basic or an in. Just a, just a master class here of competing, being a pros, pro, backup. One, two, three, no, yes. Love it. And gave his team an opportunity to score right before half. Just executing what they're calling. Playing on time. And again, those, those aren't huge throws down the field, but you can trust them. Next one here, third and 12 after the penalty. And this is really kind of the separator for me. We miss an in up top. This is a chance for a, a massive play. And it's kind of a bummer because he kind of gets himself into trouble with his pocket movement here. Now, I think you have to step up in the pocket. And again, Easy for me to sit here and do this with a clicker and a pen. But if he gets up and just resets in the pocket, he probably makes this play. This to me is also a play. Let's go back and watch it from the back because this is this is tough. This is playing quarterback at a high level. Up, settle right there, throw the end. But if you're going to stay on the move, which I could see why you'd want to stay on the move, see some space there. The difference between a guy who's a backup type guy and a guy who's a playmaker in the league or a starter is this type of play. They can make these types of plays consistently. Off platform, 
got a chance to make that play, and he probably thinks he should make that play. But because he doesn't, this is really a turnover-worthy play. This should be an interception. That's a tough catch, but if he could catch, he'd be playing offense, I guess. But one, two, really fortunate that it wasn't an interception. But it shows a few things here, just as far as the pocket movement, getting yourself into trouble, and these kind of off-platform throws late down the middle, dangerous. But a lot of guys in the league, not a lot. The top-tier guys can make that play. And so what is this? This is either an iteration of four verts with an in or just a dagger at a three-by-one. We're going to come across with that special, that clear, and we're going to come right in here to this space. And it's certainly there. It's a great 12, third and 12 call. When I'm saying he's getting himself into trouble, he hits that back foot here. And instead of, yeah, he has to get up immediately, but instead of getting up to go, let's get up to settle. You know, Get up, settle, give it a chance down here because we probably have that, and then we probably have something coming underneath out the other way. So just ah, oh, so close to having a, a really an outstanding performance. I, th I think he still has a good performance. You'd also love that wide receiver at the bottom of the screen to kind of settle up in the hole right outside the opposite hash. So not that hash, but the following hash settle up right there. But man, you can see that that's got a chance for a big play. This And when you only get, say you only get 50 throws a year as the backup guy, these are plays that will eat at you. So close to being a big, special, magic type play. Still, really nice performance. I think there's a lot to like and be proud of. But man, we're so close to having a really special play here with an off-platform kind of playmaker play. Close. So that is a wrap. I thought Jake Luton did a great job of really playing the plays that were called. It's an important time for backup quarterbacks. You're fighting for a job. You're fighting for your place. You're getting really meaningful reps. You need to prove to your teammates that you can play at a really high level consistently. I thought Jake did a nice job for the most part. Everything except that last little playmaker opportunity right before the end of the first half. I thought he did a great job getting through his reads, being accurate, being on time, really earning the trust of probably his coaches and his teammates. Fired up for that. So, if you're interested in even more quarterback school content, got a bunch of free stuff available that you can find in the description to this video. As for this video, we are at the end. Thank you so much for hanging to the end. I will see you next time. Have a good one.